So the good news is the loader is off the tractor. The bad news, you're just gonna have to watch. Hey everybody, it's Ben here, and I'm converting this International Harvester 300 utility tractor from gas to electric. But the very first thing I need to do is get that loader off of it. Last time I got it in the garage, got a basic repair manual, took a look at the hydraulics, bought some parts, bought some tools, disconnected hydraulic hoses, and even broke a few bolts. This time I'm installing some hydraulic quick disconnects. If you're more familiar with air hose fittings, that's fine as these are pretty similar. Uh, inside our ball bearings that grab the other part and there's a sliding locking collar. There's both a male and female connection. They go together and come apart pretty nice and solid. There's also a rubber cap for them uh, to keep them clean and covered up when they're disconnected. And the back side of these are 3 8 female national pipe thread to match up with the existing connections. I also bought myself some specialty hydraulic sealant, although I accidentally got the tiny bottle, which didn't last very long, so I had to get a different one later. Uh, and in a couple of spots, I needed a male-to-male -male adapter to complete the connections. So I replaced the one hydraulic hose, and then I brought out the quick disconnects out here where they're actually just easier to get to. And this pair goes to the main, uh, the arm of the bucket loader, the, uh, the bigger hydraulic cylinders that we see here, including the one on the other side, which I need to add some extensions to, and I'll do that now. So I've got the hoses coming up over the top, and I'll add some extensions to those. Okay, well right now I'm feeling pretty good about this uh, International Harvester 300 utility tractor because uh, I just did what I needed to on the hydraulics. Um, I did end up getting myself some nice uh, DeWalt wrenches, been loving those because uh, everything on a tractor is bigger than working on a car and I needed the next size up in tools. Um, I also did find that um, this Apache thread sealant seemed to be just the right kind of stuff uh, for hydraulics. I use that as my sealant. And what we can see here is uh, over here I got a pair of quick disconnects and those are going up to the bucket. And the other ones that the back end is back under there kind of hard to get to so I pulled the disconnects out here. That's for the, you know, the main arms of the loader right there. So that all has disconnects on it. It's, uh, it's modern. Um, I've also got plenty of extra hose here. Now that doesn't look real pretty. It's going to have to get zip tied up when I'm all done. But for now I wanted to have enough space so that I could use the hydraulics to lift this entire thing up and off the tractor because I need some way to get this big bucket and loader off of here. And the only way to do that is going to be with hydraulic power. Then I also routed uh, these hoses here over the top of the tractor to get over there to the other side. I'm going to zip tie those up onto here, up and over, down the other side to the other hydraulic cylinder. It smells awful in here and this is with all the doors open. Well, the good news is if there's a hydraulic leak, I can see where it is right away. Sure enough, I had sprung a leak. I had reused an old part and then didn't uh, tighten it down properly. So I pulled this apart, replaced the part, and tightened it down right this time. And it was good after that. I fired up the engine so that I could run the hydraulics. Uh, remember, I had already removed the bolts from the back of where the loader attaches to the frame on the back axles there. And what I wanted to do was just move the hydraulics a little bit, see if I could get some movement back uh, at where that connection was. But unfortunately, it was also right after that that I discovered something uh, pretty crummy.
clearly I was pretty concerned about this. First thing I did was look to see where the loader frame was and wasn't attached to the tractor. And frankly, this just should not have happened. Um, it almost looked like it uh, came apart under its own weight. Uh, this was a place where there was an old repair here and it split right along that weld, whereas the other side was just fine. I tinkered with the tractor a little bit more, including removing the grill, and after that decided it was just time to get the tractor out of my garage. I put some ballast in the bucket to help hold down that end while I'd try to release the opposite end of the loader. I'd watched several videos on removing loaders from tractors, but this was an old school loader, not a quick release one, and it really looks like it wasn't designed to be easily removed. There were issues in the front with the clearance on the mounting tabs, and also the loader frame wouldn't clear the headlight stock, so I had to remove those as well. Even when I could scoot the loader frame forward, I ran into issues with that darn spacer that some old farmer had welded on, jamming up the works. Even when I was able to get things to move around a bit, the front hydraulic cylinders would have just come down and got caught on the steering. Worst of all, I had to be very careful not to make that split any worse than it already was. I pretty much decided that I was not going to be able to remove the loader as a single unit. I'd have to come back at it fresh and with some additional manpower. A few days later, my brother came out to help. We decided we'd have to take the loader apart to get it off, so we started by propping up the arms of the loader with a jack and post, and then drove out the pins that connected the bucket to the rest of the frame. We also had to disconnect two of the hydraulic lines. With that, I was able to back up the tractor, and the first part of the loader was off. Okay, that will definitely need to be secured. <laughs> Nobody walk under that. And there we go there. There was a bar over the top of the tractor connecting the two sides, so that had to come off next. That anyway, so, but, I mean, that's jammed. That's not just gonna like fall out or anything. So now I could actually like lower this. We wired up the hydraulic cylinder so it wouldn't flop around and hit the steering and front axle. And then we could move the part around to work it loose from the back. After that, it was just a two man lift to get the part out of there. The other side was more of the same, except it also had all the hydraulic hoses. I pinned those up out of the way. We also had to be really careful as the steel in front of the split was almost ready to fall off. So it's not pretty, but the loader is off the tractor. Woo! Tractor. There's the loader. So it's not over yet though, because I still needed to get the tractor back into the garage. And when I went to go start it, I could not start it no matter what. I spent well over an hour trying to start it. Uh, eventually I gave up and I went and got my Electrac lawn and garden tractor, which frankly uh, looked like the world's weirdest tractor pull. And even then it was less than ideal because the temperature was about uh, 33 degrees and raining, uh, which is the ultimate recipe for wet. I mean, even if the ground was frozen, at least things wouldn't sink into it. Once I got the Electrac up onto the driveway, that's where I actually had enough traction to pull the tractor through all the mud, get it up onto the driveway, and then finally push it back into the garage. So now I finally got the 300 utility in the garage, the loader's off of it, and it means I can finally actually start the process of the electric conversion. So uh, the next video is going to be de-icing. That means removing all the internal combustion components, uh, gas tank, oil, coolant, radiator, all that, and eventually the engine. 
So I'm excited about that. Uh, check out the links so that you can see all the videos on this project and make sure that you, uh, you subscribe and you hit the little notification bell so that when the next video comes out, uh, YouTube will actually tell you about it right away. So until next time, stay charged up.